Good morning, everyone. My name is Matt Pereira, Senior Strategist at eCampus Ontario. But today, I am honored to serve as the moderator for today's session, Micro-Credentials, the Pathway from a Learner-Focused Experience to Innovative and New Blockchain Tools. I would like to extend a warm welcome to all of our attendees, and I hope you are as excited as I am to dive into this fascinating topic. We have two amazing speakers here today. John Lewis, who is an academic content specialist at the University of Toronto School for Continuing Studies, and Alexi Berlati, who is the CEO of BC Diplomat, a cutting edge technology company that specializes in blockchain solutions. I eagerly await John and Alexi's insights and experience in this subject. So without further ado, I'll pass the floor over to John and Alexi. Thanks, Matthew, and thanks everyone for joining us today. I'll be presenting the first half of the presentation, then I'll pass it over to Alexi. So just give me a second here, and I will share my screen. And there we go. Okay, so our agenda for today, um, I'll be offering a brief introduction to the micro-credential program at the University of Toronto School of Continuing Studies, or SCS, going forward. Um, we'll talk about some of the learner-focused experiences we offer, as well as some of the challenges and the next steps that we're facing. And then, like I said, I'll pass over to Alexi to talk about some of the innovative new blockchain tools that are available in BC Diploma, and we'll conclude with a Q&A. So I'd like to start with a poll. So the question you'll see on the screen is, does your institution currently offer stackable micro credentials? And you'll see a few options there from no, we're not really playing in this area to um, yes, all of our micro credentials are stackable towards a certificate or some kind of macro level credential. So maybe for about 30 seconds, I'll leave it open and then we will see what the results are. Okay, great. Thanks for your participation. Um, I'm seeing the, seeing the majority of respondents um, are in that category of some of our micro-credentials can be stacked. And I'll just say that here at SCS, we're kind of in that boat as well. Actually, most of our micro-credentials can be stacked um, towards a certificate, but we'll talk about that in, in the rest of the, the presentation here. I just wanted to lead with this because this idea of stackability is sort of a key functionality behind this idea of pathways mm -hmm. among different credentials. So thank you everyone for participating and Matthew for running that. All right, so micro-credentials at SCS, what do they look like? A bit about us first, we are the non-credit open enrollment division of U of T. Uh, we serve many thousands of learners each year. And we have partnerships with um, hundreds of professional instructors to, um, who come to us from industry, um, many professional associations and different faculties and divisions um, across uh, the U of T campuses. So we have been, we offer a wealth of programming that aimed at professional audiences that is skill-based and that is job related. And, and we've been doing this for a long, long time. But what we noticed in those years leading up to the pandemic and what was accelerated during the pandemic, and I'm sure many of you um, saw the same thing, was this uh, focus, this renewed focus from government on this idea of skills and competencies. So I've included a couple of quotes here um, on the left from the federal government uh, related to the need to have Canadian workers um, upskill or reskill to fill in these gaps in the economy and how that's very important for the economy to thrive. And then on the right hand side from the Ontario Ministry of Colleges and Universities, um, identifying micro credentials and these rapid training programs um, as a way to fit these skill gaps. Mm -hmm. So with this awareness um, came um, other supports and other pieces started to fall into place. So we saw OSAP funding um, became available to our professional learners. And then there was a Canada training credit on the federal level as well. Ecampus Ontario signed a partnership with BC Diploma, to giving us a platform with which to issue micro-credentials. So as this was happening um, at SES, we felt that the time was right to take a strategic and learner-focused approach to our micro-credential program. 
So how do we respond? Well, currently we offer 46 micro-credentials across nine distinct program areas and four faculty industry partnerships. And these numbers are always growing. Uh, you'll see in the pie chart there, kind of a high level breakdown. Most of our micro-credentials are in areas like business finance management, IT and engineering. Um, although we do offer uh, 10 micro-credentials in the marketing and communications area, and those are actually some of our most popular um, courses. So although there are diverse program areas represented here, um, they are similar in that they run for five to six weeks, some four, and they all focus on these specific skills and competencies on top of those traditional learning outcomes uh, we see in our full-length courses. So that's where we are. And I just wanted to talk uh, for a few minutes about our learner-focused experiences. And when I say that, I mean, I want to talk about how we're meeting our learners' needs. And we do that in, in three ways, by offering courses in a format that's very relevant um, to our learners' lives, by um, targeting content that meets their needs, and by making sure there are funding opportunities available for them. So like I said, our micro-credentialed courses, they're all short, flexible, they're accessible. They really are these just-in-time learning experiences. They're all supported by these authentic summative assessments that reflect workplace deliverables in those specific sectors. So there's not a lot of exams that happen in our micro-credentials. And they're all um, tied to skills and competencies, which have been identified by industry professionals, whether that's our instructors, our developers, association partners, employer partners. We've also chosen to focus uh, mostly on areas, uh, for example, IT, project management, uh, that have already have a strong culture of professional development and certification. Um, and in fact, 29 of our micro-credentials have been endorsed by association partners, and many of those are eligible for professional development units, which is a great value add uh, for learners who already have to engage in professional development and upskilling to maintain their, their good standing. Finally, 39 of our 46 micro-credentials are eligible for OSAP, and we're very proud of, to offer that support to our learners. The seven that aren't are those partnerships, which kind of have a different model, um, but we've also made sure to price our courses uh, in, in a way that a learner could maximize the benefit they get from the Canada Training Credit as well. So trying to remove the barriers um, to taking these micro-credentials for further education. So we offer a lot of flexibility in our micro-credential program and a big piece of flexibility are these personalized pathways um, to learning. So of course, you'll see on the left-hand side there, we have learners who just take these individual courses, they earn individual micro-credentials. Each one it provides evidence of the achievement of a specific job relevant in-demand skills. They can add these to the resume, they can share these on LinkedIn, um, they can use them as necessary. But we also offer learners the opportunity to take related micro-credentials. Um, they can bundle or stack these together with full-length courses um, if they choose to, and this can culminate in a traditional certificate. So the certificate is like the primary credential that SCS offers, and we allow our micro-credentials to work towards them in, in many cases. And the idea here is that each micro-credential serves as evidence of this specific skill set being developed. And then the overall certificate is this evidence of like competency in a broader area. So 37 of our micro-credentials can be stacked in this way towards various, various certificates, some for multiple certificates, actually. So just to dive into some of the data um, that we've collected so far. Um, so related to this question of stacking, um, we, we've given learners the opportunity and the ability to stack, but the one question is, are they doing it? Are they taking advantage? What's the uptake? Um, so you see some data here. It's from the winter 20 to winter 22 term. So we're about a year lag on this. Um, but you see this, I looked at some of our certificates that we offer, just a selection um, along the bottom there. And we wanted to look at the learners who were working towards earning that certificate in that two-year time frame and asking, did they take a micro-credential on that pathway to earning the overall certificate? Um, and you'll see in many cases, yes. Yeah. So looking at that marketing advanced certificate on the right-hand side there, we see that about 170 learners in this two-year time period earned a micro-credential on their way to earning a certificate. 
Um, for the advanced and agile project management certificates, we're seeing well over 100 learners are choosing um, to earn micro credentials on the way to a certificate. Um, and there are various, various level numbers of learners for the different certificates. There's a lot we still need to do with this data. First of all, update it for the last year. Um, and then second of all, to look at the significance, um, comparing this you know, to the overall number of learners who are earning certificates over this period. Um, but it, it is a good sign. So the question is, are learners choosing to stack micro-credentials together? Um, it seems to be the answer is yes. So it's a good signal. We've also collected some data just on our, our basic course evaluations for micro-credentials. So you'll see in this word cloud here, I have grabbed some of the, um, the key terms when we ask learners, what are the positive aspects of this course? And some of the things they're calling out here, um, real world experience, um, the group work, the group discussions, the application, the short period of time. Um, these are all kind of key features of a micro-credential, right? So we're really glad to see that coming through in our course evaluations. And you can compare this to this verbatim uh, quote that I, I took from a marketing uh, course evaluation, actually from the fall 2022 term, so a little bit more um, up to date. We see this learner is calling out the uh, condensed style of the course at five weeks and the fact that they were able to take some content, some knowledge and some tools and immediately apply it to their work um, and being able to expand their knowledge and perspective and the strategies that they're taking to their job. Uh, and this is a great example, we think, of, you know, that upskilling scenario, that career advancement scenario that micro-credentials can really support. And just to build on this, I've provided a couple of examples of um, shares on LinkedIn. So from the BC Diploma platform, when you're looking at the micro-credential, you can share the badge component directly to LinkedIn like this. Um, and so I, I grabbed a few examples from the winter 2023 term that our learners have uh, have shared. So on the left here, you see this, this person has earned information management, a micro-credential, and um, they say they're looking forward to completing more courses with U of T. Because this, so this is great. This is an example of the micro-credential being a pathway into further learning with the university. On the right-hand side, um, th this person has earned an IT micro-credential. They've connected it directly to, you know, hashtag professional development. Um, and to their own uh, efforts at career advancement in preparation for writing that CI essay exam. Um, so again, that upskilling career progression. Um, these kind of sharing, it, it's great because it means our learners are enthusiastic and positive about their learning experience. And it's just some great organic kind of marketing for the School of Continuing Studies and for a micro-credential program. So again, a really good signal um, that we're on the right track. Just to end here before I pass over to Alexi, because of course, the challenges and next steps that we're facing. And I think what this comes down to mostly is this question, where do we go from here? And many of you are, might be in the, in the same boat. Um, there are of course challenges. So one of them, and again, I'm always reminded of this as I said in earlier sessions um, at the forum so far, um, but regarding the various definitions and understandings of micro-credentials. So, right, so we, we have our own strategy at the School of Continuing Studies, but we're talking with colleagues across our campuses at U of T, we're talking with um, counterparts in other institutions and with learners who may be cross-shopping micro-credentials from different institutions. And you're seeing some, a lot of variance in terms of the duration of uh, a micro-credential learning experience, the cost, the expected workload. So this is kind of a constant challenge. It complicates the conversation, but it is something worth struggling through, I believe, and worth pursuing because a positive lesson that we have learned from our, in the few years we've been doing micro-credentials is that they, they give us the ability to supplement declining or stagnant enrollments when we see those in our full-length traditional courses. So we've pulled some data comparing um, enrollments over time with our, our full-length courses and then with related micro-credentials. And we're seeing that when those full-length enrollments start to decline, um, we, we see that the, um, these micro-credentials can pick up the slack, can give us, um, get us back to historical levels or increase enrollments when you view the program together. Um, this, this is good learning for us because we may have the same instructors teaching micro-credentialed courses and our traditional full-length courses. Uh, we may schedule them at complementary times um, in the academic year. So what's that balance look like? What is, is there room for both of these models in continuing education units? 
we think the answer is probably yes, because there's so many great opportunities. The main one we're seeing at SCS is um, with our faculty and other divisional partners who are interested in offering micro-credentials. Um, in these last couple of years, our, our question is, how can we leverage what we've learned? Our, our strategy, our design development capacity, our, our infrastructure, and all these related services that we've built. How can we leverage these to help our partners and our le other learners and their learners um, achieve their continuing education and their upskilling, their reschooling, their employment goals? Um, it's a big question. And our suspicion is that this idea of pathways among credentials and a pathways from the credential to the job is going to be a big part of it. And with that, I am going to stop sharing my screen. And Alexi, I will pass it over to you. Thanks a lot, uh, John. Uh, thanks a lot for your uh, for your part of this session. Uh, on my end, I found it was really interesting. Uh, hello, everybody. Let me share my screen. Here it is. Okay, so for the second part of this session, uh, well, first I'd like to, to thank uh, all the participants for attending uh, this session, of course. And for the second part of this session, uh, I will uh, go into the te technical side of micro-credentials. Um, so maybe the, the, the first point uh, I could say is that um, we can observe, so BC Diploma is a French company. Uh, we are super happy to work with various institutions in Ontario, in Canada, in North America, but also globally uh, in more than 20 countries. And we can observe uh, more and more institutions offering micro programs, micro courses, catalogs. Uh, so we can really feel uh, um, more and more micro credential uh, appearing in, uh, in uh, education space. Uh, so of course, this is very interesting because it answers uh, the professional world uh, demand, but the learner needs to get uh, a document, a digital document of the obtention of the, the, the certification of the, the skills obtained. Um, so this is a capture and I won't talk uh, more about what uh, University of Toronto School of Continuing Studies does uh, with micro credentials, but I'd like just to make uh, the autopsy of a micro certification uh, you can issue with BC Diploma platform. Um, so I hope I won't offense anyone uh, by saying that at the very beginning of the micro-credentials, we have open badges. Uh, and I'd like to remind that uh, we work under some standards uh, with uh, open badges uh, standards. And I just like with this slide to remind all the, the mandatory categories uh, that uh, component uh, uh, an open badge. So of course, we have the name of the credential, the, the, the title of the, of the credential. Uh, we have a picture for the micro certification. Okay, so this can be uh, really totally configured uh, by the issuing institution. We have the name of the in issuing institution. Uh, the identity of the recipient of this uh, certificate the learning outcomes, uh, the description and what has been uh, learned thanks to this uh, micro-credential, the competencies that has been obtained also belongs to the standards, and of course the earning criteria assessment to obtain the, the credential. So this is uh, all the categories uh, that uh, make uh, an open badge. Then after the open badge, we have additional categories. And here, uh, our vision is that uh, we go from an edu educational side of uh, a micro certificate to the professional world and to the professional side, uh, because professionals need more information uh, to, uh, to, to adopt uh, this kind of certificates. So for instance, uh, with micro credentials today, you have the possibility to add some uh, information regarding partners that would endorse uh, the micro credential. Okay, so in this example, you see, uh, we have other institutions participating uh, to the program, to the, to the micro, micro program. Uh, you can add also uh, some information regarding 
the pathway. Uh, John, you, you talk about that briefly during your, your, uh, uh, your pitch. Uh, so this is really interesting also to, to be able uh, indeed uh, to indicate that this micro credential belongs uh, to a broader program and you can find additional information regarding this program on one micro credential itself. You have also, uh, I forgot to mention, an optional expiration date. And we also offer the possibility, in addition to the common assessment that will be the same for all uh, micro-credentials issued with one model, uh, we add the possibility to, uh, to, to, to add a specific assessment and a specific link for each learner, each recipient. For instance, uh, we can indicate a link to a YouTube video or to a personal web page uh, the, the, the learner uh, did uh, that will be part of the assessment to obtain the micro credential. So this is the structure of a micro certification. Uh, maybe I can show you that uh, in a real conditions here. So we are in uh, my Google Chrome application. Uh, see, this is uh, a real uh, micro-credential, well, a test uh, micro-credential, micro but this is uh, the final result, okay? So you can see this is the link of uh, this micro-credential, the unique link, the unique URL of this micro-credential. Uh, so it's really easy uh, to manage uh, a link uh, so you can easily share the link to the recipient and after, as John mentioned, uh, it's super easy to add your uh, micro-credential on your LinkedIn profile. So I will talk briefly about that later in my presentation. Uh, okay, so uh, regarding the micro-credential, of course, we need some proofs of authenticity, some evidence uh, regarding the micro-credential. So you can see here in this example, well, on each micro-credential issued with VC Diploma, you have a proof button. Uh, when you click on this button, you will op open the proofs panel. And in this proofs panel, you will find all the information allowing you to check step by step uh, by yourself the authenticity of the blockchain credential. So BC Diploma stands for Blockchain uh, Diploma. Uh, so we use the blockchain technology in our framework uh, to securize and to guarantee uh, the authenticity of the certificate. So this is interesting. If we go a little bit in detail in these proofs, uh, you can verify the authenticity of the credential. You can verify the identity of the issuing institution. So here, uh, I won't go in too much into technical topics, uh, but you have the possibility to check the identity of the issuing uh, institution directly on the blockchain ledger. Uh, and you know that the blockchain ledger, you may know that it's immutable. You cannot modify, uh, delete, or uh, falsify information. Uh, so this is uh, important. Uh, you can trust this issuing institution because it has been validated by uh, an additional upper level uh, institution. Okay, and you have also access uh, to all the data of the micro certification that has been encrypted and stored directly on the blockchain. Okay, so with BC Diploma Solution, all the micro credential data is stored on the blockchain. And thanks to the data immutability and the, data and the blockchain uh, decentralization, uh, this micro credential will be totally secured, totally tamper proof, but it will also be uh, very sustainable over the time. Okay, so we can consider that uh, a BC Diploma micro credential link will be accessible for life for the learner the recipient so this is really uh, an important service and uh, a convenient service for the for the learners okay so uh obtaining micro credentials uh, during uh, the studies uh, during the professional life is important and it becomes more and more important uh, but i'd like also to introduce uh, this uh, notion of the learning pathway this is very important uh, to be able to to uh, to indicate that because I earned uh, various micro credentials, when I add all these micro credentials, uh, it uh, it allows me to obtain a final certificate. Okay, so this is an example uh, of a certificate, uh, a final certificate from which you can click on the pathway button, and when you click on this pathway button, you will 
access and you will uh, display all the micro credentials that has been stacked uh, to obtain the final certificate. And here, same thing, uh, the final certificate is a blockchain object. Uh, so you can check the same, uh, the same uh, uh, verification. You can check the authenticity of the final certificate, but you can also access all the different micro credentials uh, that are part of this final certificate. So I can show you that also uh, from my uh, web application. Okay, so this is the same attestation. This is the link of the final certificate of Gendo. Uh, you can consult the proofs of authenticity. Okay, here. Okay. Uh, I just want to show you also that, of course, uh, to make this uh, credentials convenient for use. You can click and you have uh, here on the share button, you have some interesting sharing features. Uh, so you have a one click button to add your certificate on your LinkedIn profile. If I click on this button, I will open my LinkedIn profile and it will pre pre populate uh, this window. And I just have to check the information and to save this information to add in a single click my new credential on my LinkedIn profile. Uh, so this is it. You can also create a post on the most common social networks. You can download a PDF version of your credential. But I was talking about the pathway. So if you click on this pathway button, as you can see, you open the pathway of this certificate. And here you can access each micro credentials uh, that has been obtained to, uh, to, to, uh, uh, to lead and to obtain the final certificate. So for instance, I can click on this button to access this specific micro credential that is also a blockchain object. Uh, you can check the authenticity, et cetera, et cetera. So let's go back to my presentation. Uh, okay, so we, we had a brief introduction about BC Diploma micro credentials uh, uh, using blockchain technology, but of course we uh, always uh, consider the challenges for the learner. Uh, so we are all agree that micro credentials become more and more important in the professional world. Uh, so we are happy to, to work in this, uh, in this area and we try to, uh, to bring innovative and useful uh, services for the learners. Um, we, we, we know also that uh, one individual may obtain various micro credentials from various uh, origins uh, from uh, the university from uh, uh, a next school maybe uh, during the professional life he will obtain also other micro credentials uh, maybe will follow some online uh, courses uh, so you will have uh, over the time a lot of micro credentials coming from different origins. So we 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 are convinced it's important to offer uh, an e-portfolio, a wallet uh, in which you can store your different micro credentials. So this is why uh, we offer now a wallet application that is uh, a blockchain wallet. Okay, so it's not linked to the issuing institution who creates the wallet. It's really the ownership of the student. Uh, so this is an example from Civis University, a European Alliance of 10 uh, European universities, uh, in which uh, each student can claim uh, the credential in uh, the wallet application. Uh, and from this wallet application, you can manage your uh, micro credentials. Uh, you can send and share your micro credentials to anyone. And of course, you have a total control uh, on your micro credentials. Uh, this wallet is totally free for the student. It has no uh, validity date, so it will be accessible for free uh, for the learner. So we are happy to, to offer this innovative blockchain service also for the learners. So thanks a lot uh, for your attention. We come to the end of our uh, session. Uh, I just want to thank you again for your participation. And I hope we have some questions uh, for us. Thanks again. Well, thank you so much, John and Alexi, for sharing your knowledge and expertise with us today. Uh, it's great to get a better understanding about the potential impact of micro-credentials and the use of pairing them with the blockchain technology and how that affects the, the future of education and training. 
Uh, we do have potentially quite, uh, time for one quick question, uh, maybe two, but there is one from Scott in the chat. What is the sustainability of blockchain credentials given the enormous consumption of resources it maintain, uh, to maintain it? Okay, so maybe I can take this question. Uh, so this is an interesting question. Uh, blockchain technology uh, can be considered today as a mature technology. Uh, so we have a lot of different blockchains. Uh, we have uh, three main types, the public blockchains uh, that are uh, managed and uh, uh, handled by the community. You can have private blockchains uh, and only authorized users can uh, uh, access and manage this ledger of information. By default, we use public blockchains and we try to use uh, uh, strong blockchains of course so we used uh, in the past ethereum we are currently used for the specialists uh, avalanche blockchain uh, based on ethereum protocols uh, they are really strong blockchains really well distributed with a lot of nodes uh, the, the the ledger is a uh, existing in a very important number of copies all over the world. Um, so we are totally confident in the fact uh, that these blockchains are really sustainable uh, over the time. Perfect. Thank you, Alexi. Uh, so we are out of time, uh, but I want to thank you both for such an amazing session and conversation here today. Uh, that does conclude this session. So after a very short four minute break, we'll be back jumping into our second last session using stackable micro credentials for innovative faculty developments. Thanks, everyone.